Welcome to IdeaGen TV, presented globally by Microsoft. We're so excited to be here today with Amy Hopkins from Capella Space, President and General Manager of U.S. Government. Welcome, Amy. So great to have you back. Always great to be here. You know, Amy, it's so great to have you back. You were formerly at Boeing. Now you're at Capella Space. And I guess the first question we'd like to bring to you is, what is Capella Space? So... Capella Space, we are the first fully owned and operated U.S. and built synthetic aperture radar commercial satellite company. And I know what you're going to say. What is? What is a synthetic aperture radar satellite? So if you can imagine... Um, satellite pictures. We use them every day. I'm sure, in fact, you probably used uh, your, your a map function sure. to get here and you see your satellite view. Yes. So those pictures are typically taken with a, uh, a camera, yeah. just like on your iPhone okay. from space. So we take the same sort of pictures, except our pictures are taken with energy. Much like when you go in for an X-ray or an MRI, an energy picture is created. So because we take pictures with energy, I can see through things that normal cameras can't see through. Wow. So I can see through the weather. We can see through the clouds. I can look at things at night. I can look at things that otherwise would go obscured. Again, much like if you're going to go in for a picture of a broken bone or your MRI, same type of concept. So that is what a synthetic aperture radar from space, that's the kind of pictures that we're taking. That's incredible. And we've seen recent examples in the media citing Capella Space, which have been just profound. And so you can see through, you can see through weather. What are the implications of that? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll digress a bit, but I need that's, to hear so what that is. For us, it, uh, it's really about our, our mission. It's about taking this kind of technology and bringing transparency, mm. transparency to things that would otherwise go obscured. Uh, everything from support to detecting oil spills, to illegal mining, uh, to deforestation, to nuclear proliferation, humanitarian and peacekeeping missions, you, you name it. The application of this technology, uh, much like I think the advent of GPS, who would have thought we all need a GPS every day of our lives? Every day. Every day. Every day. I think that this technology, <laughs> every day, everywhere. How, I don't even think I got here without using GPS today. Yeah, it's a problem. It is. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not working, but right. that's another story. Right. But so, we rely on it. Yeah, right. so we think about this technology, um, the way we currently use it, but uh, companies mm -hmm. like Capella and, and other folks who are data scientists are learning what to do with this type of data. And I don't think we have yet seen exactly mm -hmm. everything that we're going to be able to do with this, this sort of technology and, and, uh, and data. And, and so synthetic aperture, I mean, I'm, I'm stuck on it because I think it's so profound. It sounds like it's like when you're liking it to GPS, that's profound, right? I mean, it's 24 seven, it's all weather, it's day night, it's timely, it's accurate. Imagine what that kind of information can do in the hands of a decision maker, any Incredible. decision maker. Incredible. Support to humanitarian, support to, uh, again, deforestation, support to peacekeeping missions. Sure. That's the kind of data when I think of, again, the goals for the United Nations and, and building this sure. sustainable development transparency, bringing that out globally in a way that people can use. And is the technology available to anyone that contracts with Capella? Yeah, it is. And it's actually, uh, you don't even have to contract with Capella. One of the things we just created was uh, an open data forum. So for researchers, conversationalists, scientists, uh, humanitarian folks, if you qualify, we will provide you our data for free of charge. Free of charge. Free of charge because we want to make sure that this data gets out and we know and we continue to learn how to leverage this data. 
Um, one of the most recent uh, things that we, we helped with, uh, I'm sure all of us have seen this in the news, the La Palma, the volcanic, the volcanic yes. eruptions that are going on. Most, uh, most technology, you can't, you can't see through volcanic ash. You can't see through those clouds. Our technology can. So we can show the folks ahead of time, ahead of when they normally would see where the lava flows are going. Oh, wow, because otherwise it's obscured by it's the, obscured by the, the volcanic ash. ash and the cloud cover. And again, getting that information to folks who need it in a timely manner uh, saves lives. Well, Amy, it's incredible to hear the breadth and depth of what you're working on. Having come from Phantom Works at Boeing, I'm not shocked. OK, and I'm not surprised that you're doing something so incredible. And so let's pivot a bit to global partnerships. At IdeaGen, you know, we're committed to fostering global partnerships across sectors to solve for X, to help to uh, solve so many of the world's most vexing issues, and to ultimately help to achieve the global goals by 2030. It sounds like you're doing the same thing. And why are global partnerships so important to you? Uh, to, to me, those global partnerships, transparency is critical in this. We have to build these partnerships to become more transparent. That transparency leads to communication. You and I have talked about this before. A lack of transparency, you know, it leads to ambiguity. Ambiguity leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to hesitation and then doubt, and then we don't communicate. If we don't communicate, we're not going to become partners in achieving the vision of these goals. That's right. So to me, it all starts back again with transparency. That's incredible. And we heard a lot about that today. We have. It's, it's been very interesting to hear from just about every speaker, you know, the notion of transparency, authenticity, trust came mm -hmm. up a lot. And it sounds like that's exactly what's built into the ethos of Capella. Is that pretty much? It is. On it point? absolutely is, is what we're built on. And so what are some examples of how you've utilized this technology? You've talked about volcanoes. You've talked about humanitarian efforts. What are some other ways? And then maybe even if you could publicly, because this is a public forum, forecast a bit about other potential applications of this. It sounds just groundbreaking. So some of our most, what I would call, you know, recent successes, uh, have been in the realm of uh, support to detecting oil spills. Uh, recently, there's been, there's actually been a few. Uh, there was an oil spill off the coast of Sri Lanka, uh, an oil spill off of the very cloud covered coast of Japan, and most recently, an oil spill off the coast of Huntington Beach, California. Hmm. We were able to support the governments of these countries and our, and our own government with identifying with our technology where the spill was, how it was progressing to, in order to help contain it. Wow. And so to me, that was um, one of the huge successes lately. We talked about uh, working with the volcanologists That's right. uh, on the recent La Palma um, ongoing uh, efforts there. Uh, another one uh, that is near and dear to you know, I think to all of our hearts, is the, the illegal mining and the deforestation in the equatorial zone. That zone is typically cloud covered most of the year, which affords people the cover to do things they shouldn't be doing because they would they go unnoticed. So we've been able to work with NGOs and other organizations uh, in in South America in order to identify where the illegal mining is happening and the deforestation is occurring. That's incredible. Uh, lastly, one, one, one last success story I would like to note is we worked in cooperation recently with um, the Middlebury Institute to identify in the uh, Russian Arctic region uh, some activity that where the Russians were testing advanced nuclear weapons. Our technology was able to identify things in this region. Again, the Arctic region 
is cloud covered. If you can imagine on average, 25 days out of every month. Incredible. Yeah. What goes on when people don't believe they're looking mm -hmm. to me, we have to bring transparency to that. Transparency again, incredible. Yes. What is your global call to action for our audience here today, Amy, in your role as president of Capella? Uh, my, my, global, my global call to action, uh, I'm going to go back to something I've said before in one of our last meetings. Um, I'd like us to purge our lexicon of soft words. Could, would, might, should. We can't hang objective end states on this. We have to speak. It, we will do this. We cannot could, would, should, hope, or might it. That's the way we're going to get these global goals done. What an incredible final word. Amy Hopkins, Capella Space. Thank you so very much. Thank you.